Hello and thanks for joining me. One thing I've always, always tried to do on this channel, and uh, this channel's been going now for about seven years, I've had about 2,000 videos are coming up to that. One thing I've always been determined to do is be true to myself. There's some videos I um, feel I probably could have done better, worded things better, the quality's not great. Uh, others I'm quite happy with, um, but I've always, always consistently vowed I would be true to myself and I wouldn't make a video conscientiously self-censoring. By the same token, I didn't make videos, I've never made videos to be provocative just for the sake of it, and if they are provocative, they have a purpose. But the point I'd like to make is that in this world, I really don't think that if you have any conviction, you can go through life always sitting on the fence or hiding your true feelings about something. Now, I appreciate in parts of the world you have to. You know, in totalitarian states, it's clearly not practical to shout out your political opinions. And there's obvious reasons for that, that, you know, there's risks that we don't face in democratic societies about criticising governments and so on. But thinking in the context of um, more free societies, I don't believe there's any such thing as an absolutely free society, but more free societies in, in multi-party democracies where freedom of speech is highly, it, it's seen as very pivotal, um, you go up against another challenge, particularly these days, which is an oversensitive generation. Um, you know, we live in an era where people get offended by so many things, far more so than the past. And I believe that's more negative than positive. The only positive is that if it means people are more wary of bullying, that's a good thing. But I'm not even sure if that is a side product, because I think bullying is just as bad as it's ever been. So I don't think increased political correctness reduces bullying. I don't think there's any correlation with that. I would suggest that bullying is just as bad as it's ever been. So I don't accept this argument, oh, policing language um, reduces levels of bullying. I think that's nonsense. And when we look at such nasty shows as the Jeremy Kyle show, that's a modern thing. You know, that's part of this era. So I don't think there's any evidence that a, a society that's more sensitive with words reduces nastiness and unpleasantness. What it does do is bring a situation where people have to walk on eggshells. And I mentioned that democracies value freedom of speech but we can't take that for granted because we do see situations where legislation can be abused or even drafted in such a way that does violate basic liberty now an example of this would be how hate crime legislation is used i've just read about a teacher who faced um investigation for hate crime because she refused to use uh transgender pronouns with one student because she believed in using the correct grammar terminology. So we do see situations where policing of words and semantics can lead to real implications for freedom of conscience. And I will never accept the argument that someone's feelings matter more than another person's liberty. Now, I'm not saying that people should just go out and be offensive. I'm not saying that if you know, for example, in the case of, since I've brought it up, of transgender terminology, I'm not going to go up to a trans woman and refer to that person as he, knowing that they won't like that. Um, you know, so I'll, out of politeness, I'll use a preferred pronoun, but I am never going to accept the situation where I, for example, would be forced to recognise them as a woman. To me, a woman is a biological human adult, female. 
a man is a biological human adult male. Masculine and feminine is a different thing, that's gender. But my point would be the trans lobby is conflating gender and sex these days. You know, so the go-to argument, oh, well, gender is not the same thing as sex. The point here is when you're demanding that, um, you know, a trans woman is a woman, then that is playing with sex, biological sex, as opposed to uh, gender pronouns. But anyway, um, that's just one example. You know, I could give any range of sensitive subjects. The point here is, in this world, there's always going to be someone that takes issue with an opinion that you have. And this could be a socio-political issue. It could be something that's you know not connected with that. It could be, for example, your opinions on a type of music, a particular music artist, um, a particular film. You know, that's not exactly a political issue, but it's people could get pretty strong opinions over popular culture. So if you go through life sitting on the fence playing it safe on one hand you're avoiding confrontation but the price of that is kind of imprisoning yourself you know kind of accepting views that you might not agree with now I I am a believer in judging each situation on its own merit so I don't believe every time someone says something I disagree with I need to challenge them there are circumstances where, you know, I would say, okay, well, just leave it. It's not worth the fight. But I really don't think it's healthy to go through life self-censoring and not saying what you truly believe. To me, that would be a very shackling experience. Um, I think we have to just be aware of the fact that, you know, and if you're a prominent person, if you're a public figure and you never, if you're never controversial... I'm almost a little bit suspicious of that. I almost think, well, you know, what are they hiding? <laughs> if if someone in the public eye is never controversial, they never offend anyone, they never, you know, some might say, oh, they're just such a nice person. I'm thinking they're just hiding something. You know, some people obviously relish being controversial and being outrageous. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a situation where you shy away from it so much that you're just never being really true to yourself. So, for example, if I'm a public figure, I know what my opinions are, and I know full well that some of those opinions are politically incorrect, and if I'm upfront about them, if I'm confident in saying those things, I will piss someone off. And what I do think is very unsettling and we need to be very wary of is how for example hate crime legislation is used and how casually words are throwing thrown around like sexism racism because someone's career and livelihood and reputation can be totally trashed overnight and it seems to me that the onus is entirely on those making the accusations I mean um on those that the charge is being thrown at and there's no onus on those making the accusations to back it up. So you can literally smear someone as a racist or a sexist, especially if they're white and especially if they're a man, and there'll be no real like onus. Journalists will not hold you to account and say, Well, what's your basis for this? You know, what what are you basing this allegation on? And I find that very disturbing. So we're having a situation where we talk about freedom of speech in the West and I still think there is a lot more freedom of conscience to be had compared to a country like China, for example. But we can't take this for granted. I believe it is under threat by this current oversensitive, hypersensitive um, trend that we have. And yet the irony is, paradoxically, we're also seeing more confrontation you know, we're seeing angry confrontation over Brexit, over a, a lot of other issues as well. So increased word policing doesn't lead to a more tranquil society. It doesn't lead to more politeness. I think it actually has the effect of people bottling things up and then it all comes out. Surely it's better to let people say their piece and, you know, if they're wrong, if they are being sexist or racist or homophobic, challenge them. But this thing about policing words, 
I think it's very dangerous. If someone is clearly engaging in threatening bullying behaviour, so for example, you know, if a group of kids are mocking the kid with red hair or who's overweight or who's an ethnic minority or whatever it might be, that's bullying. That is wrong. And action needs to be taken against that. But if teachers would be are being threatened with hate crime legislation because they've used the wrong pronoun, because adults have decided that their four-year-old is a trans child, I, I think that's a worrying trend. You know that teachers are being forced to use false semantics. Um, so, when I think of the future, I think that if you're in public life, some people get away with being shocking. I mean, there's a few individuals, Pierce Morgan would be an example. He's pretty controversial. He's pretty outspoken. And I think the main reason that Good Morning keep him is because people tune in. They find it refreshing. They might find him very arrogant. I do. But there is something refreshing there because he's uninhibited. He says what's on his mind. I'm not saying he's always right. I do find him pretty arrogant the way he talks over guests. But I think people find that refreshing because they say or they think, well... This is someone who just says what other people are thinking. I mean, he's in an enorm enormously privileged position. I hope he realises that. Because many other people would be facing, you know, legislation. They'd be facing policing over what they say. Um, so I really think that you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, what do I believe in? Am I prepared to stand up for this? It doesn't mean being obnoxious. It doesn't mean making other people feel bad. But if I think something is wrong, I'm going to say so. It doesn't mean I'm going to look for confrontation. It doesn't mean I'm always going to, you know, lap it up every time someone disagrees with me or every time I take issue with what someone's saying. But we cannot go through life saying, I will, uh, I'm just going to keep quiet. I'll never say anything about that. Because at some point you'll find it will just boil over. I think we have to be true to ourselves and I would much rather be unpopular and speak my mind than be popular and be insincere. You know, ideally I'd like to be popular and sincere, that would be wonderful. Who wouldn't want to be liked? You know, but if it's a choice between losing my values and just selling out completely versus maybe being unpopular then I would like my epitaph to read, this is a man who spoke his mind, or maybe this is a man who wasn't afraid to stand up for his conviction, even when it made him unpopular. And that's not about, you know, I don't see that as being a martyr or being brave. I think it's just natural. I think it's the way that everyone should try and think, being true to themselves. Because, you know, this comes in social situations as well. Most people don't like a so-called friend that turns out to be insincere well the same principle should apply to how we regard life in general be sincere I don't think it's a case of always getting into an argument always you know saying oh I disagree about that but at least don't put on a false front and pretend you agree just because you want to look good or whatever let me know your thoughts